Coming. Hey, this is Stu and I'm at the beautiful Purple Valley, of course, and today I'm with John and Julia and we're going to be talking about um, the spiritual journey that is present for many people within the yoga practice. And so, first of all, I want to say to John, you've been practicing maybe for sort of 30 years plus. Yes. And so, up until maybe before this year, what sort of route had your journey taken and maybe how did it start? Well, first of all, I was inspired by Derek Island, and I, I'm not embarrassed to say, for reasons of vanity, I wanted to look like Derek. And so I was very much on the physical form, on the outside of the body, and uh, I guess that's where my ego was. Um, I wanted to look like Derek and then also say, look at me. So when I started uh, practicing with Guruji, he just straight away came in and said, that man is only exercising. Mm -hmm. He was pointing directly at me. So he picked up on it straight away. Yeah, so I was working out. And uh, when Guruji uh, sort of conveyed to me that this was a work in, i.e. a meditation practice, rather than an exercise, of course my intention changed within my practice. Um, there was a period where I had uh, maybe workshop after workshop after workshop and from the focus of my material um, I went into a altered state of consciousness that some people thought I was having a breakdown uh -huh. and some people realized I was in that altered state of consciousness where my perceptual field was greater I was seeing more hearing more than the ordinary that could have been triggered by a previous first-time uh, experience with ayahuasca. It wasn't until meeting Julia later, uh, when uh, Julia had come from uh, Peru yeah. and had uh, several ceremonies of ayahuasca, I'd only had the one, and in our conversations and sharing notes and experiences, Julia sort of changed my idea of, of what my experience was and you know, most of, the, most of the students know that I'm right into the Matrix and many sort of movies like mm. that in terms of how you get into an altered state or you're able to uh, excel in terms of your cities or your superpowers. How do you transcend our ordinariness? And I loved the what the bleep going down the rabbit hole. Mm. At the time that I was having my first ayahuasca experience, I was going down the rabbit hole but I didn't realize it and I resisted totally blocked the, the experience and had a night which was not pleasant in terms of just real anger and frustration. Uh, but then talking to Julia, that her experiences were more about the connection to nature, connection to the natural self, which is that little step that we're doing, if we're doing the third line of the sutras, Tadadrastu Svarupi Avastanam, to return to our natural nature and flow in the form of that. Um, it, we, our discussions were about how do we transcend this ordinary physical realm. And so, going back a little bit to the beginning, what made you change so quickly from a physical bit to fully taking on that this was a spiritual practice and that I'm going to go down that route? I think um, when I first started the practice, Derek inspired me and I was searching something in my life. Of course there's the surface level of yourself, then there's the subconscious level, there's the deep undercurrents. And we all have those deep undercurrent questions, what I call the basic five. Where are we? Where did we come from? Who are we or what are we? What are we doing? Where are we going? And so those were those were my undercurrents when I met Derek. On the surface, I was looking for that, uh, what, what, where am I going in my life in terms of what work am I going to do? Yeah. And uh, when I met Derek, I said, that's what I want to do. But the connecting to the breath and the practice took me into deeper layers. Mm -hmm. Yes, but I also wanted just to say one thing, that I think John was always a teacher. Before he was teaching others play golf and you knew that you want to teach but he was looking for his subject for quite a long time for 30 years and when he found 
Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga, he understood that this is it, that this is what he can give the, to the people, that this is a subject he wants to share. Yeah. So that was part of your journey already, is, is yeah. focusing in on what was your interest and what were your, your abilities. Yeah. And what it is that gets you up excited in the morning. And as far as yourself, Julia, you, had you already started a journey of exploration before you met John and before you then started to practice yoga? How, <laughs> what was the linear line or connection? <laughs> okay, so um, actually I just told you that I started to practice yoga three and a half years ago, but it's not yeah. true because I started to practice yoga when I was 18, when I arrived from Kazakhstan to Poland and I was living in Krakow, and Krakow is still a city of younger yoga. So I found my lovely teacher, Eva Varzawa, who introduced me to yoga, who was my first teacher. And I was practicing it for some time, but I think to, to transform my body and my mind, I, I needed Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga, which, which is, for me, is a practice much stronger and much more intense. And That's I think the paradox. I need a intensity. It's dynamic. It's physically, outwardly dynamic. And it is very much a vehicle, but uh, some of our bodies need that dy dynamic quality in order to bring our bodies to that point of awareness that we're uh, in the flow of the dynamic nature. So about the how, I think because you're interested in how did I came to this moment yeah. to, to try the medicine because the people who work with the, with the vein of death, <laughs> it's told, yeah. or ayahuasca, actually it's two plants, it's ayahuasca and chakruna. Um, I, lost, I lost my... Uh, so we were saying, so for those of you that are, are <laughs> not sure where the hell we're going with this, the um, recently in the beginning of this year, was the end of last year, February, February. this year, the guys went to a trip uh, to Cambodia? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. Colombia. Colombia. We went to Colombia. To the Amazon. To the Amazon. <laughs> to, to perform uh, ceremonies. ayahuasca ceremonies, trip, grand yes. tour almost. Yes. Yeah. Multiple ceremonies. Um, and from that came some, some was it processing, yeah. that sort of thing. And so for, I've done a little bit of research because actually my experience of any mind altering anything really is zero. So I thought I'd better read up a little bit about um, ayahuasca. And so it's considered rather than just a recreational drug, Absolutely. Uh, plant not... medicine. And so of course there'll be different camps. Can I jump in there, Stu? Yeah, because exactly. I think to bring it into the yoga context, yeah. Guruji called our practice mind control. And we've just used the word, I've said an altered state of consciousness, yeah. or you've said uh, mind altering. altering. Let's say mind opening. Mind opening. Let's yeah. say that in, in our yoga practice, what we're trying to do is open our mind to that which is greater than ourselves. Yeah. So in, in terms of the spiritual journey, it's to exit our separate individual self, our caught in our own I story to control our mind to not be in that place, but to open our mind to a, great, a greater, wider field of perception. And in a, very much to reconnect yourself to the nature, because mm. we, we're living in a very weird time. Some of the people are born in a city, they grow in a city, and they die in a city. And many of these people, they have a depression, they don't know why, they don't, like, they don't feel a connection with the earth, they don't feel a connection with themselves and because we are disconnected from the from the earth from from the place which gave us life and people before they they were much more happy when you just go outside you go to Colombia you you go here to India and you just walk in the beach and people are more connected to the nature you see that that they are much more happier so if there are I mean in my case I thought I do have a connection with myself. So I was born in Kazakhstan in quite a wild country. And uh, I consider that my childhood was quite happy, but still I lost this connection. So I, I, I found myself in such a point in my life that 
I need to go there. And I don't know why. And I think this is kind of a greater force which, which wants to take you to the journey. Mm. And this was the, the best thing that happened to me. It was before, it was uh, actually a month before I met John. I went to Peru uh, two years, almost three years ago from, from now. And I think this is not one way, but definitely one of the ways to reconnect you to yourself. Because the plants have much more information than we think. They were here before us. <laughs> they have kind of com they 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 just very old teachers. So in that the, that we have a possibility to get the information and to connect to higher consciousness mm. because this is what you actually do. And so there are certain questions. I mean, I can leave this open for both of you, really. Are there certain questions that you were thinking that you wanted answered when you decided that you would embark on this little journey to Colombia? Or were you just going to see what happened next? Because some people might say, well, if you've been practicing for 30 years... Why do you need that? Why do you need that? Yeah, exactly. What, what it is it that's still missing or that you feel hasn't been revealed at this stage? And why isn't it being revealed by the practice? I think uh, to explain that again, try and keep a parallel to the yoga. When, yeah. when Julia was uh, in Peru, I was in Costa Rica with Dan Millman, mm -hmm. the Way of the Peaceful Warrior. And I was on a Way of the Peaceful Warrior workshop while Julia was uh, having her connection to nature experience. So this is post Guruji's death. Mm -hmm. So this is post Guruji's death, after Guruji's death, I'm seeking more depth. And what I learned from, from the way of the peaceful warrior really is that most of our ordinary life, we're in reaction to life. And that the warrior is to find right action and to be always in action, which has been in the point of awareness, this constant awareness. Um, and so f for me, the, the journey of my yoga practice, when I had my altered state or opening of mind consciousness uh, in London on a, on a workshop there, um, I wanted to know what was the key to the door that opened that up. Mm. And I wanted to find that key or find that access point again because it had sort of happened but not quite happened to that depth again. And so what I, all my reverie, all my reflections, all my inquiries are saying there is an altered state or an expanded state of consciousness that is extraordinary to our ordinary everyday life. Mm -hmm. We need our ordinary everyday life to function, but we could enhance our ordinary everyday life if we could expand a little bit more. The yoga journey takes us there gently. There's no shortcuts in anything, but sometimes we can have some uh, experiences by meeting someone, another teacher, that gives you that extra little kick. So it's like Newton's first law of, of motion is inertia. And I always think that the student travels at constant velocity or sliding downhill until they go to their teacher again or another teacher comes along and gives them a kick. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like a fast track kick. And so my journey after Guruji had gone was just plateauing a little bit. People had asked me, John, what do you do now that Guruji's not there? And so I, I said, well, I've got my Guruji inside, but then I went, Dan Millman, because he's been a very influential writer in, in my, let's say, my yoga text reading. Yeah. And, and so he was a little kickstart. And so then I think when Julie was saying, John, why don't we um, together have a, a, some ceremonies together? Just seeing that again is another kickstart. Not to, to, to shortcut anything, uh, short-circuit anything, get anywhere, but just to give ourselves that little extra propulsion. But I actually was amazed that you said yes, because I wanted, I always like give John something to think on and think about, and, and he said, let's go, let's go to Amazon. <laughs> yeah, I want to go with, with you there. So. I think John is a person who we really ready to open to, to many things. And when we were talking about that, and, and I was saying that I completely, I don't have a lot of experience with any drugs, but 
it's definitely not a drug. It's not a thing you can get used to because the experience itself is very intense on different levels, on physical level, on mental level, on, on emotional level. And at least in my case, I would won't be able to do it quite often, but this feeling of reconnection with the nature, with yourself. And also when I met John and he was saying, he was asking, who are we? Where are we going? And I, I had the connection that I, now I understand these answers because he was saying about the source of love and I've had a feeling that I experienced that in that journey. So the, the, the joint experience that you, you had involved several ceremonies, were there times where you were thinking, well, one is enough, or <laughs> yeah. do I want to go through any more, or, or what was the motivating factor for doing more than one? Uh, Julian found this nice guy, uh, Darius, a uh, Polish guy, who was, a, uh, who was our guide, and we had five of uh, in our team, uh, yoga practitioners uh, from, from our teacher trainings, um, and another five Polish people, so we were a group of ten plus Darius. Um, Julia and I arranged to arrive later, because uh, in January I was having surgery. Mm -hmm. So I had two inguinal hernias operated on. Um, so let's say our whole journey was a challenge. And for me it was a challenge even before we arrived. So I needed some days to heal before I could fly. It was just um, two weeks after. It was two weeks after, after the operation. Yeah. Yeah. So the, and I'd, I had sneezed on my first day. <laughs> and I think I might have at that point done something internally when my left side had swollen. We went back to the surgeon. There was an option to drain it off, but he said, because you're going to the Amazon, I don't want to drain anything, just let it, it will be fine. However, I was on heavy painkillers after the operation. Um, and I, I, as a side effect of the painkillers, I got terribly constipated. And uh, the, the, the irony or the paradox is, is that you know, when we're pr doing our yoga practice, we meet ourselves every day and basically we meet all our stuff. Um, and in, in, we, we have to cleanse and purge that stuff. It might be through sweat, you know, it might be through laughter, through tears, it might even be through, through acute awareness, meaning a pop in the knee or something, and yeah. then you've got really something to work through. Uh, for myself, with uh, my projections of going with Julia to the Amazon, was I thought I was going fourth dimension. <laughs> After my first experience where I resisted, I thought, no, if I go with it, if I go with it, there I'm going to get up there into the real subtleties of Pratihara. Because for me, meditation is all your thoughts come to a point of no thought, and then, as Guruji said, that's not it. It's not ending with no thinking. It's to open up to receive, to then receive or download or revelation. So for me, pratyahara is the same. Pratyahara, you've got your senses being drawn out. You bring your senses in, but what happens if they go like that? So your senses come in, then your senses actually expand. So you're able to go beyond the sense of our limited range of hearing, limited range of sight, for example. Anyway, so I had my projections that I was going to go into that place, into space, into the third and fourth dimension of this reality that we're in, to see more than. Well, I arrived constipated, and we were in buses, unsealed roads, sitting 90 degrees, bouncing, uh, not being able to push because of fear of splitting the, uh, in, inside. Yeah. So, so there I arrived with, with my aspirations of really doing that, but I really arrived with all my stuff. Yeah. And I then had to process. So the first day that we actually had the ceremony happening was after a few days traveling. We'd met the group. We arrived then at the sh shaman's place called Taita Florentina. And we go into this room and I immediately call it the basement because it was sort of very basic, wooden floored, not been swept. There was cobwebs, there was stuff 
Um, it was I mean, they, they live in very simple very basic. facilities. Mm, yeah. And when and you, you live in Europe, and you, just for you, it's, it's very new. And we were, to put our, we were to put our sleeping bags down on the sleeping mats. We had brand new sleeping bags, brand new yeah. silk liners. <laughs> we'd had brand new torches. So it's we'd a luxury. <laughs> we had, a, we had <laughs> our no, brand new bottles. We had all those <laughs> things. And then Darius is saying, just put your mat down and you need to take some rest. And this is rest. your home for five yeah, days. <laughs> take some rest. The ceremony will start about nine o'clock. So he lies on his bed. He's out because he's totally had three days organizing and doing that. And he's tired and he's out. He's asleep. And he knows how it's going to look. He so he knows so he that he needs need an energy yeah, exactly. for, for others also because he was processed like helping others to have a process. Mm -hmm. And John doesn't know that. <laughs> and then there's another, another Polish guy, um, Bogus, in the group, and he has a luxury mat. He's got to blow up one. <laughs> so he's lying on there and he's... <laughs> so there's Darius sleeping, Bogus snoring. 6.30, Parrots the outside. Parrots. <laughs> the so parrots like go out crazy. Parrots outside. The dogs go crazy. The, the, the shaman, the fighter, he's walking on the floor of blood. The dog's walking on the floor of the blood. And I just cannot get out of being irritated. Totally, and it's totally. also your body, you started to feel a fear. Your ego feels that there's going to be something big and doesn't know. And you feel so irritated. I mean, I already went through that. So I just was trying to calm down and to feel that I need to surrender. And this is the only thing, thing that it matters. But John didn't have this experience, so <laughs> he woke up. It was he's waking me up and say, Julia, it's nine. What's going on? <laughs> it hasn't started. Darius is still asleep. We just need us. We just need to wait. I say, we just need to wait. And he's never behaved this uh, this way. He's like very patient. Uh, well, I'm, I'm out of my comfort zone. Mm. Um, you know. But anyway, ten o'clock comes and I go, Darius. <laughs> I actually wake him up at this I actually wake Darius up and I said, Darius, it's ten o'clock. He said, What are we waiting for? He, no, he said, John, he said, time is not linear. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was getting it back because I'm always talking about time not being linear. <laughs> so um, what was really interesting was the challenges were that we were out of our comfort zones. Uh, we, we weren't in that place where we were conducting the retreat or the journey. We were absolute participants on the journey, um, and it was completely new territory. And Taita Florentina also is known uh, for very strong medicine. When the ceremony started, it was something like 11, 30, 12 at night. It was a beautiful beginning. We sat round the fire, and he spoke of love. Uh, and this being the year of love, he was saying, in terms of the medicine. And so we had a lovely uh, session to start off with, and then we took the medicine, and it was really thick, strong. I didn't remember it being like that at all. It was so hard to drink. And then we were just told to go back and lay down. Because it's a form of tea, is that right? No. Well, <laughs> they, make they make a tea it's from like it or a, something, do they? If you would, I think if you would do a coffee like for maybe 10 hours and it becomes so very, very syrup, thick. Really. More like a syrup. And you still feel that because it's a... It's, it, it's plants, so you still feel the parts of the plants. Mm. So you don't feel like you don't know what you're drinking. And it's amazing because the body remembers the sensation, the taste, the mm. sensation. So you just remind yourself and I feel like, yeah, you remember mm. that very well. And so after you've taken the ayahuasca, there's a period of waiting, processing. We were supposed to just lie in our sleeping bags. I had to go and sit by the fire and, and try and be in a meditative position and to, to go through with the experience. And then, of course, people started to purge. And you hear them purging. Uh, so purging is vomiting, vomiting and sometimes diarrhea, yeah? Yeah. Sometimes yeah. both. Sometimes, sometimes both. both. Um, and so, <laughs> um, when you start hearing everybody else going into process, that's quite difficult. I went into my process. Uh, uh, my very first ayahuasca experience, I had no vomiting. My friends had said, you'll probably vomit and might end up spending the night under a tree, but if you get through, you'll then go into this uh, altered state. Um, so I'm waiting for this, this, this time I'm being positive, so I'm waiting for the sensation of vomiting to happen, but <laughs> 
it's the other end, which is fantastic because I'm actually getting it all. Been being fluffed <laughs> yeah. up for so long. <laughs> Emotionally, physically, yes. I wouldn't have wanted so to be I, there. <laughs> yeah, so I just spent the evening on the toilet, uh, which wasn't pleasant. Um, but uh, the frustrations, we actually had three ceremonies in, 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 in a row, so three nights in a row, and it's very difficult just to talk about the first night alone without looking at yeah. where it goes. And so on the first night, basically, uh, Julia and I were going, I was mainly going through process, and Julia was at a different level to me. She was going in and out, and as she was going out, she would come and check on me, and then she would go into her processing. When she was checking on me, I was going through. Uh, my purging was similar to the purge that I had subtly in my yoga experience. In my yoga experience, when I had my altered state, the key word was divorce. Mm. I'd met a young receptionist at the, at the yoga center. He was a young gay guy and he was really upset and he was going through divorce. And I said, oh, and how about your partner? He said, oh, no, no, I'm not divorcing my partner. I'm trying to divorce for myself. And that just gave me a focus for that day and that continued that I realized I had to divorce from myself and whether or not the medicine from the previous first time experience was still in my body I went into an expanded mind consciousness this time in, in, in um, Colombia on my first night what I had to do first of all was I had to go right back to base level to root chakra and that's where all our securities is. But to be secure first, you have to meet all your demons and all your fears. And so Julia was checking on me in the bathroom, and I was just sharing with Julia all my fears. And so the yeah, first we night, yeah, like very. Even when we knew one another for two years, this night was a moment when we found out many things that we couldn't share before. Because you don't realize that actually they can stay much bigger. Mm. And you meet yourself and you meet a partner. It can be both beautiful and can be very strong. But you opened, you opened the door. So the first night and the second night for me were very much all about me and my, let's say, my two lower chakras. And I really had to process through those two first before I could get to my third one to be empowered to do anything. And you have to be in the empowered place to then divorce from yourself. So it was actually on the third night, the third ceremony, that I then had my real purging in the sense of um, I vomited that night and had diarrhea that night, but I really purged or I was able to expel the ego job. Which is, so coming back into our yoga practice, the mm. difficult thing in our yoga practice is when we're doing self-practice especially, we're all practicing individually. So that's why in these workshops what I'm trying to do is get people not just to do selfish practice, but to learn the count, to work then together, so then they're working together as a team, so you're having to get out of yourself to be caring for someone else and yourself. And then if you're doing it in a bigger group, and so that's why my teaching team and I all practice together, because we support one another through our journey, but by being within that, you are getting out of your own story. Today, I was in my own story and I had to, to cut back a little bit, because I'd done too much lifting this morning and I was mm -hmm. spinning my groins. And the practice and the technique of counting couldn't get me to that place where I could transcend the, 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 the pain I was feeling today. So the ayahuasca was more of a kickstart. It was really like, as Julia calls it, a medicine. It was like taking a medicine, a potion, or you take a yoga pose. You're taking a yoga pose, or you're taking a medicine to purge stuff out. What are you releasing when you're doing triangles? So when we're doing the ayahuasca, you're not doing any asana. You, it's, a, it's a bigger uh, experience in the sense that on the yoga mat, you can duck and dive around it. But with the ayahuasca, it was right there, you had to go with it. Um, and so, 
for me, again, it was divorce. It was exactly the same divorce principle. The divorce, I use that word. I had to divorce from the ego, John. Uh, I can tell. I can share you a little bit of the funny part. Uh, that Julie was checking on me in the toilet. <laughs> I was. I was. Was just a little introduction because I arrived very much there for John. I wanted John to experience that, so I, I knew that I'm gonna take care of him. Mm -hmm. So every. Every night is not too intense for me because I know that he's there, and if something will happen, I need to be for him. So it was half an hour left. John went to the to the toilet, so I said, "Okay, so he takes his time," and he was not coming back. So I came back, and he was sitting in the light. And it's normally not nice to see to sit in the light when you you're processing. You want it to be very dark, or maybe have just one candle. So I. Left the candle there and said, John, if you would need me... Yeah, I'm in the toilet. Yeah. If you would need me, just call. <laughs> Ten <laughs> minutes later. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm really feeling this happening and, and I haven't vomited the last two nights. The second night, I'd actually cleaned the toilet. The toilet bowl, there's no seat, it's just a bowl. The paper, there was toilet paper on the floor, I had to clean all that up. Then there, there was the bucket. Anyway, I've got the bucket for toilet paper. I'm on the toilet and I'm going, oh no, it's going to be coming from both ends. And so I'm conscious enough and I go, well, if I'm going to be sick, I'm going to get, you know, I, let, I might lose my beads. You know, so. That was your <laughs> so, the most precious thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, you you know, didn't have any more in Colombia. So you to I took my beads <laughs> off and I put them in my little jacket pocket and I zipped them up so they were secure. <laughs> and then it's actually happening, and the whole thing's I'm vomiting and I have diarrhea, and I'm taking my beard out, and I'm just, <laughs> my hair's there, I look like an absolute I, crazy man. And then I hear, yeah. Julia! <laughs> I said, Oh, it's just 10 minutes after that. And I opened the door, and my husband just with beer out, completely like he's looking at me and through me, he's in completely out of state of mind. So, okay. So he's there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was uh, very interesting, very interesting of a, a, a cycle. So it's not just one <laughs> purge in the night. You purge and you purge and you purge, and you will then cycle through a cycle. And so I went through some some things. I was calling Julia because Julia was the key. She was my key to being there, and also now the key in my life. And, and she then linked me back to Darius, which linked me back to Derek, which linked me back to Guruji. And Guruji linked me then to Jesus. You don't know, you just get Well, the Guruji message. pointed to me one day and said, you are God. I am God. Everything's God. So from Julia to Darius, Darius to Derek, Derek to Guruji. And then there was another guy, um, uh, young, young David. David, David, another David, another David, he mm. looked like a young Jesus. So I would went from Guruji, Jesus, oh, I've got to go and see David. And then I had to go around and check all of our group, check each one's face. And then as I was looking at each one, because they're also Polish, the night before, when Julia was processing, she was downloading information it was poetic, so poetic. And I said, Julie, are you downloading? She said, yes. And I said, are you downloading in Russian? It sounds so poetic. And she had to, she had to record it because she was just speaking. You can't, you can't. Sometimes you, even your hands are, it's, it's hard to write. And you don't want to leave in the state because it's actually very subtle. Sometimes for everyone it's going to be different. So for John, he had to wait to this moment where he will completely open. Yeah. For me, so. it's always very subtle. So just the connecting to myself and I'm just get information. There are no any kind of snakes that people are talking sometimes about that's all around the, all the different creatures. No, it's just very few connection with the cosmos and you just stay in this state and you get the different information on the answers from for the questions or something you never you just feeling like the plant is traveling all over you and it's it's a high intelligence and it gets all the like arrows out from you and the moment of purge you feel that it's not a only 
physical feeling. It's like you put much more out of yourself. And then next day, Jim was very happy. <laughs> but, but how my cycle was, I would go, uh, Darius, uh, Julia, Darius, David, and um, Derek, Guruji, David, or Jesus. And then I would go, oh my God, I can speak all languages. I was in a place that I could then understand and speak all languages. And then I went to a place where I went, oh, oh my God, I'm a drug addict. And it was like in a previous life I had been a drug addict, or it took me to the suffering of humanity, and then I cycled into like child, that I was like in a rebirth situation. And so that's where I would then end up at the end of my cycle, and then when it happened again, I would then go back through Julia is the key, uh, Darius, Derek, Guruji, and, and I just cycle, just I'd cycle through the whole night. To understand what is going on, just to don't let it sound a bit weird, very often in our life we're going through the loops. We stay it's in one sorry. place and we understand that we go through the same mistakes, we, we meet different people but they are like the sa from the same key. And what happens when you, in the process, when you're with a medicine, what's inside of you, you're going through the loop also. For some time you're looping, 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 and then you're out. So you process something. And the, what happening, what you see outside is actually completely different from what you see inside. So for people who'd never experienced that, it's very weird. It's like seeing someone a bit mad because normally you you say the same words at the same time, you're very emotional, uh, then you just come back, then it's like opens and closes. And it can go for an hour, for two, for three, depending on how long it will take you to get out from there. Yeah, and so I it's cycled, samsara. I cycled quicker and quicker. Julia was remembering yeah. me saying, I got here, I've got here quicker. I've got here quicker as I cycled around. And remember, we've taken the same dosage. Mm the same uh, doses of medicine, yet we're all having different Experience. experiences. And Julia had told me that uh, when she was in Peru, people that had a stronger, uh, ego. a stronger ego had more of a difficulty with it. And so what I was really meeting was my ego. I was really meeting that part of me that I need to divorce to get to that real heart center and be in that heart center. And so, f so what Columbia did, it took me back to, to read Mulabanda. And, and so when I was then starting to have some information and revelation that was more yoga oriented, it brought me back to my Mulabanda, then the second chakra, what I've been calling Groin Banda, and then Groin Banda to Navi Chakra. And I realized that this was the, this was the security, this was then the trust, this was then empowerment or responsibility. Yeah. And so there was, there's many other issues that we can talk about in terms of uh, base, middle, uh, first, second, third chakra. Yeah. And then, to, as I said, you have to be empowered in here, but grounded to then get up into the heart chakra. And then when you can get up into that, that's when it's healing. And that's when it's healing for you and healing for others. That you're still rooted. And that's, so for me, in terms of tying it then back, my experience back into the yoga practice, it's reinforced my focus and understanding of Mulabandha, Uriyana Bandha, Jalahala Bandha, mm -hmm. groins and armpits, to get into that shashumna, that, that central channel, that central nervous system. And the, from what I was reading, it says that after these experiences, often quite dramatic shifts in consciousness or shifts in what you perceive is important to you, or that sort of thing. Has that been the case for either of you? I think it very much depends on where are you in your life. So if you don't know much about yourself, it can be a huge change, it can be a big shock. You even might just want to come back to that because you have nothing else to hold on. But if you are grounded in your life, and you know the answers, and you I mean, for me, it was a big healing, and I think John didn't know that for him, also the medicine going to be a big healer. 
but well, I've healed incredibly fast. And yes, it was it was very amazing that the body really healed. So you could say absolutely that this so is a physical medicine. healing. And but uh, as far as a mental healing or mental medicine, well, I think one of the questions that sort of guaranteed in terms of our inquiry was that we know we don't want to live in the city. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and so we're, we're searching the place that we want to sort of try and find our natural center. Yeah. So this is more like, again, return to nature, more yeah. of a connection with nature. Yeah. It's very much connected to, connect you to what you really are. So depending on what you... you John met his... he reconnected to his teacher, to Derek, to Guruji, because he's connected to them all the time. He wants to be connected to them. but someone who will be connected, to, I don't know, to Christianity or to, to just being in nature, he will just meet himself. It's all the time seeing a mirror, every time you see yourself. So it can be sometimes scary, it can be beautiful, it can be... I, I was happy just to come back to the source of love, so that's why for me it's nothing different from what we do here. It's For me it was yogic experience to understand what is the source of love? Mm. Because here, very often, I think on the earth, we have, we live in such a, almost we have like amazing movies with like transformers and all this flying and, and this, what's like skeletons or something. Like we seek for magic. Yeah. I think we do understand that we're not just the human beings who just came here to make money, to pay for the house and then die. We want more. Because we are much more, but we just came to a... The earth is a beautiful place, but we can also make it a prison. Mm. We can always make our practice a prison. We can injure ourselves. If we're really looking for it, if you we're looking for it, the... How do you call it? Like, the break, the... the when you can punish yourself. Yeah, yeah? Just so you can practice and be grateful and you can nourish yourself or you can just punish yourself. So I think this is a source which shows you how, how life is actually greater, how beautiful it is and what an experience we have to be humans. Which is hard because we're in a gross state and to appreciate the subtle it's very difficult when you're in the gross state because the gross does not understand the subtle. And so what we could say, to transcend, uh, you can only transcend if, if you... you can't transcend what you don't know. Mm -hmm. So to transcend the self, you have to know the self. And so the yoga practice is bringing us to the point on the mat each day to meet ourself, to transcend ourself. Okay, and so our, our medicine experience was just bringing that meeting more mm -hmm. abruptly to you to discover more about yourself. It's also about your question, Stu, does it bring the changes in life? From the people I knew who had experienced that, I think it brings the changes if you have some kind of a practice, so if you have some kind of a discipline, so you can, like, you were in Amazon or you had an experience with the medicine, you understand that's a big thing, but you just don't put it on the shelf. You work with that. So mm. if you got some gift or some message to change, it continues working. you just sit down and you process that. And you want for change, you ask for change, and it's coming because everything is coming. If you really ask and you believe it does. But if you are just experience that and you want to change the calm itself, it doesn't work this way. I don't believe in that, that it comes this way. So it's, I'm not saying it has to be Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga. But just but any practice, mm. something that really holds you on the track. You're probably asking yourself this question to ask us. Would you recommend <laughs> taking medicine? I could say that. Would you recommend? <laughs> 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 well, yeah, this is it. I mean, for a lot of people, they'll be thinking now, oh, is this for me? Yeah. Or yeah, so why that's would a, I want to do it? Yeah, yeah, so yeah that, exactly. That's how we, we brought it up. Julie and I discussed it before. We wouldn't recommend it to anyone. Mm. It's something that becomes a journey for someone, you'll meet it like you meet your yoga. Yeah. If you meet it, if you have actually met someone that's had the experience and they're sharing their experience and then that inspires you 
to go on. So, for example, I had an experience and then I, I had said, no, it's not for me. But then it came to me again through Julia and it was through Julia that I went, yes, I'm going there again. But uh, it, I wouldn't, I, I, I'm not going out there now saying, look, you got to get Let's do it in the month. You've got to get out there and, and do that. Yeah. So again, it's a bit like the, the yoga. It's by inquiry. If you're inquiring that way, then gen generally follow it. But if you're not inquiring, it's not to be. It's yeah. it's not recreational thing. Yeah. It's something you should be ready for. Yeah, but when you say it's not recreation, it's not recreation, and it's not a drug. Yeah. I considered it a drug when I first took it, and that was a misunderstanding and I resisted it. And now I realize it's more of a medicine that in my particular case, I did so much purging. It was cleaning stuff out. I had all of the um, general anesthetic. I had all of the painkillers. I had all of that that was in my system. And also I'd had really invasive surgery. So in the process of taking the medicine, I was also purging the operation. Yeah. and all the chemicals that I took on board for that. And maybe that's why I've also healed quickly, is because I've let the, the, the natural body do the work. I think what people will find interesting as well is, is now you've done that, where is your, is your journey more clearer to you now where you're going? Do you have more questions? Do you, what's next for you as a person or as a couple also? Um, to look at the place to live, to try and lessen the workload, yeah. to focus more on uh, maybe sharing the yoga journey and experience in different ways of social media. Um, there's still something special about the one-to-one -one teaching or teaching a small group, so yeah. I want to get the small group uh, practices going. Um, and really, it's just confirmed me that Guruji's method, uh, especially the counted method, is a, uh, um, it's a, it, it is a medicine in itself, uh, a mantra medicine, for recitation to, to clear the unnecessary stuff in our head. And if we don't, all of that stuff just builds up, builds up, builds up, and we start carrying suitcases full or buckets full. Mm. And that's what I arrived in in Colombia with, again, with some suitcases or buckets full. And what the, the ayahuasca, they just emptied it all out. And I had to clean it up, or I think Julia helped me clean it up. <laughs> Something to cherish forever. Yeah, I think that's also one thing that now in this time, the system itself is very strong. So we understand that we need, it, it's not the leaving, I don't know, even 500 years ago, you know, when, when you just, the life was a bit more simple. So, we're just coming back to that natural state of mind, and we understand that there's so much noise, so when you're coming back also to the jungle, you understand that you're just surrounded with this noise, so just put it off, to peel it off, is amazing feeling. So, some people will come with traumas to just get rid of of fear, of anger, of emotions they don't want to, because very often there's something people that they don't know what's that, but they know that they're not themselves, and it can be just greater trauma, and I think we don't very often realize, or we can't get it out of the body sometimes, because it's just very deep, so it can be one of the ways that can do it. But it's a great healer, the, the medicine is a great healer in the sense to weaken you, to, to let you come back to that natural state of, of mind, of your body, to understand that you are a child, that you are, you are here to play, you're here to have a joy. Mm. You, you, it's, it's not any kind of a just experience to, to, to live and to make this. The life is extraordinary, it is. And this is the, one of the answers you can get there. If you, if you never had this experience. Yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> is, there, is there anything you want to, because we're, we're working towards the end of our time, and so is there anything you wanted to share more of um, before we close up? Um, because we're speaking 
on camera. Yeah. Uh, we have shared sort of like just a layer. Yeah. Yes. And uh, to realize there are many, many, many layers within the experience. Mm. And so um, it's really important to, 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 to go with a friend or to go with a group that's, if you are going, that's quite close together. And you can support one another through through the depth of it. That um, even post the um, experience, we're in connection with our team that we went with, and the processing is still happening. Yeah. Um, so it's not just a one night thing. It's the accumulative of the number of ceremonies. Uh, there was a point where each person said, "I don't need to do any more." Not because they'd had enough in terms of the challenge. Just couldn't take it. No, not yeah, yeah, not yeah. because they just couldn't take it, but because the revelation of what of the experience was that's it for now. Mm. I've I've done what I need and I have things to do. And I've got things to do. And so it's very constructive in that sense. And and when you go away, it, it's still working in, in the deep layers. So the drug, if we're talking about the drugs, were completely different. Yeah, like you take it and then you understand that you can't live without it. Your body is already addicted from that. And here, I think that something completely different happens. That you, when you had one six ceremonies, you definitely would say stop, because now it's enough and I have things to do. So it's yeah. a completely different story. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, guys, so much for all your time You're and welcome. for speaking about something that is, you know also freeing in order for people to be able to hear you talking about it. So. Well, also too, I mean, we could finish off with the fact that out there in this beautiful natural garden, this yoga, um, Purple Valley Yoga uh, Center retreat, is uh, there's so much intelligence out there. In nature, there's sacred geometry, there's so much intelligence out there. Um, the, the, the combination of these two plants together in some countries is illegal. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the interesting thing is, how can nature be illegal? And the parallel to that is, I don't think the system wants us to find our natural self. Mm. Because if we connect to our natural self, the system wouldn't exist. Yeah, no, and so there's a fear there, out there. And so we live in a beautiful yoga bubble. When we step outside of that yoga bubble, we see that there's people out there that we need to bring in to to get them into well, we'd like to bring in. finding the connection to their natural self. And so that's the big move from the city to the to nature. Because nature. nature is intelligence. There's so much intelligence in nature. And how can that be illegal? Cool. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Beep, beep. Thank you, my love. Oh. It was hot. Wow, look at that.